<clears throat> the smelter plateau where the smelter is actually located. Uh, the very first smelter was the Agua Fria smelter. Um, it's actually located to the extreme southeast corner of the smelter plateau right off the uh, Agua Fria River. It operated in the 1870s um, and it actually had two different little smelters there. The picture that everybody shows is this big water wheel going around saying, well that's the smelter. That wasn't the smelter. The water wheel there was for the crushing. That's what it did. It crushed and it refined the materials in that particular building. We don't have a picture showing the actual two smelters that were there. I have the patent documents that shows that there were two beehive uh, furnaces and then there was one stack furnace. Well, there was one beehive uh, furnace there to make charcoal for the furnaces. Then there was a lead smelter, which was a beehive arrangement, and they could do about one ton a day in their particular smelting operation for that one ton of lead ore to produce for lead. Then the stack smelter was for smelting copper. We don't know how high that stack was, but I believe it was a good 40 to 50 feet high. You have to have enough heat to get that. You have to have the stack. There's all sorts of different little things going to it. But the Agua Fria smelter was the very first one in the area <clears throat> as far as real true smelting in the area. They smelted copper and they smelted lead. The big thing going on in the 1870s was the silver that was being taken out of the district. Uh, mainly the Agua Frio, the Walter, and the Kit Carson mine, which is about two and a half miles further to the west of where these things were located, that ore came down. And they were processing stuff that was running two and three thousand ounces per ton silver. And then it was at, um, running about a thousand pounds per ton uh, lead. So it was quite a bit real rich ore. The copper really wasn't worked too well at the time unless it had a gold content. That was the main thing of that first smelter. So we have the Agua Fria smelter. Then the next one was the Valverde smelter. The Valverde smelter was located about half a mile to the north, again just off the edge of the smelter plateau area right along the Humboldt River or the Agua Fria River. Um, it operated basically in the late 1890s through the early 1900s. Um, it burnt down <clears throat> due to flooding um, into the main smelter area. Um, the story goes from the one report from the LA Times at the time that slag hit the floor, exploded, and the building burnt down. Basically the whole smelter at the time was, was gone. The thing that is kind of surprising though, and it goes back to some of your, your other questions, there's no reports of any injuries or deaths. It just simply said that the thing burnt down. The majority of the workers at that time would have been Hispanic um, in that particular on the, on the floor. And that was a common thing at that time. If it was a Hispanic being killed, it just wasn't reported. Uh, I was very surprised not to see any kind of injury list in any of the newspapers at, at that particular time. After it burnt down, Another one was built uh, very close to it, which was the Arizona Smelter or Arizona Smelting Company. Um, and it processed the same kind of materials. Now, Valverde and all the newer ones, so to speak, after that only processed copper. They did not process any lead. So there was a big change from what the Agua Free was doing to what they were doing up here. It was mainly for processing copper. Um, now the Valverde and the Arizona smelting was actually started by Fred Murphy and he's the guy that built the railroads down in this particular area. And the reason he built the smelters was, to, was so that he could process the ore from his own copper mines in the area. And that was mainly the DeSoto mine and the Bluebell mine. But they also did a lot of custom work. The Iron King mine was not in operation at that time. So the, those two smelters had absolutely no ore coming from the Iron King mine. It wasn't producing at that particular moment. Um, when Fred Murphy sold a good portion of the stock in his company, um, the new owners came in. They operated the thing at a loss 
He went into bankruptcy. Um, Covassier. Um, there was an engineer out here at the time, Covassier, who later became the second state mine inspector and the first state geologist. So he actually has a history um, in with that mine. He's the one that changed it from the Arizona Smelting Company facility. He basically tore it down and built the current uh, smelter facility, and which operated all the way through the 19, uh, early 1910s, through World War I. Uh, after World War I, everything was in a depression. Uh, it more or less remained idle up until the 1940s. 